Hi, welcome to You Belong Here, the place to be for positive stories of immigrant women from all around the world. I am Portia Chan Silverberg. I run a multimedia social enterprise that supports immigrants and their allies. My favorite project is this show, where you will meet so many amazing, interesting women from everywhere who will share their stories. They will share their challenges, successes, and how they are living meaningful American dreams. I believe we all deserve to live our American dreams and live happily ever after right here, right now. My guest today is Regina Ng. Regina came to the U.S. as a double minority, Asian and woman. She came during a very interesting era in this country in the 1960s, during very active civil rights movement. Regina has such a phenomenal story because she has evolved from a clinical social worker to a business owner to now running a business um, a event center that's just completely brand new. She's launching in 2019. And on top of that, Regina has a philanthropic empire. You will hear so much more by the end of the, the show. I'm sure you too will be inspired. So stay tuned and let's talk to Regina and find out about this amazing, amazing journey. Wow, you have accomplished more than most people have in a lifetime already. So. Well, at my age, um, I think I came to this country uh, after my college education. Okay. So I've been in this country from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and uh, I think not only this country has changed a lot, but sure. I believe I have really benefited a lot from my life journey, and uh, Portia, I'm so happy to be here to share. And, uh, um, and the reason I want to be here, so to not only to share, but hopefully my story will also benefit some other women. Absolutely, that's, that's the whole reason why we're here. That's the reason why I started the show, because I feel immigrants have so much positive contributions to this country. And really, all of us are immigrants from just different generations. Correct. Right? And I believe some immigrants actually don't know or haven't been involved in their local community as much as they can. And to me, that's part of belonging. That's part of being a truly um, engaged member of a community. So uh, that's why I was really, really excited to have you here, not only because of your business empire, which is amazing, stunning, <laughs> for sure. But even more so, I really wanted to hear how you and your husband has started a papa. So we would I just love to hear about maybe the beginning. You came here from Taiwan. Okay. Right? Okay. And actually, I was not like what I am today. And I was very naive and actually very shy very quiet, just a foreign student, mm -hmm. and going to graduate school of social work. And, um, but you can say I was ambitious, but I had no clue oh. what a, a clinical social worker would do. Right. Um, but I think I came to this country, maybe I should start a little bit about mm -hmm. my motivation. Please. And uh, um, it was political reason, actually. <laughs> And it was uh, actually uh, arranged by my father. And uh, um, being a na nationalist government uh, general working, mm -hmm. uh, I think, all in Taiwan, all fled from communist uh, China to Taiwan in the, uh, in the 40, in the 50s, early 50s. And he really felt uh, it's good for the younger generation to go abroad to study. And, uh, and his motivation was for me to come to America so he can also come to join me. And mm -hmm. so uh, I think 
the mission was, well, daughter, you go to a foreign country, you study hard, you get a job, and I'm going to join you mm -hmm. so you cannot fail. So, <laughs> no pressure there. <laughs> no question there. And you can say just a one-way ticket. Oh, wow. Okay? okay and right. enough money to get you started. And, oh. uh, and so as a foreign student, immigrant, uh, student visa, and uh, only money oh. was flight to this country. Wow. And, uh, um, and I said, well, how I'm going to make a living? How I'm yeah. going to pay tuition? Right. But there was no money. So I think I have to Regina. share with you. I stayed with an American doctor family and uh, um, basically helping with the household uh, work and oh, the babysitting, okay. childcare, right, nanny work right. or whatever. Right. And uh, he was a doctor for university hospital. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, so naturally, uh, they have six or seven kids, so oh, a lot of my. work. So I earned my room and a board and wow. by staying with them. And then I worked some of the summertime and wintertime weekends and earned my tuition. And I finished my graduate school two years. Wow. And um, <laughs> now it was in the 60s. And uh, this country uh, was under a lot of like, um, uh, I, I think a good program. One of the program was uh, uh, the Great Society by President Johnson, mm. and they needed a lot of social worker, uh -huh. and they, they ran a big, nice welfare program, and a mental health counseling, and so I joined the working force, and I got a decent job, and so sub subsequently my parents did come, um, and I was very happy, and uh, uh, and I think that's kind of lesson one for me. What I learned as a young immigrant was like when you are put in a circumstance with very little other options mm -hmm. and you have to succeed, you got to make it. So I think that had a lot to do with my father pushing me. Mm -hmm. And I not only I finished my degree and I got a decent job with salary. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I was a social worker and I think another learning was as a clinical social worker, not only um, I think I have to do a good job, but I had to learn about American culture, mm -hmm. so-called social problems or right. mental health problems sure. coming from a foreign country as an immigrant. And uh, uh, it really opened the door for me mm. to get to know uh, the American um, great society right. and also the dark side of the society. Sure. And uh, fortunately, the, I call them my, like, my really adopted parents in this country, Dr. Crawford. Uh, they took care of me and mm. they also opened uh, their home wow. and uh, with the kids said, well, you can do any kind of term paperwork on my family. So I did a lot of family <laughs> dynamic work. And wow. uh, so <laughs> that was probably the only class I got A, you know? <laughs> so wow, that was great. great. And I learned a lot about American family, even though yes. doctor family. Sure. But all the family, sometimes they have similar dynamics. Mm -hmm. So it was great help for me later. And uh, so I, I worked 18 years wow. as a social worker. And uh, I know I forgot your question. And I think in 18 years, and I learned so much, and I learned some of the people this country uh, was able to help them. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only with the financial aid, but with counseling help. Mm -hmm. And I find out the great um, greatness of this country mm -hmm. um, and as a clinical social worker. Um, and then um, between my husband and I, he. I met my husband at the same school, University ah, of Washington in okay. Seattle. And after we got married, we had, uh, we, we, you know, we have three children. And uh, I don't know, you know, should I go on to talk of about mom? <laughs> sure. I mean, it's okay. fascinating. And I love that you, you have such great appreciation for this country and the, the doctor family you stayed with. I, oh, I yeah. think they, they're so representative of most Americans I have ever met 
there's just such a sense of generosity and a spirit of, you know, wanting to help fellow man. And so I, I find that wonderful that you still um, have such optimism after seeing the dark side of uh, some of the social right, problems. Right, right. And I think as an immigrant, and I, I do want to share uh, my father, of course, you know, sort of like a victim of the political mm. system. And, uh, and I think in this mm. world, even today, and I, I feel for some of the victims mm -hmm. of the war, and I yes. think it's sometimes, most of the time, uh, ne not necessary. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, my father was one of them. And uh, when he did come to this country, and he was eagerly waiting oh. to get on the plane to <laughs> come to join me. Right. Almost the minute I got a job, he said, well, here I come. <laughs> okay. And so finally, my parents came. And uh, so I appreciate how people helped me. Mm -hmm. And my father particularly, um, and he was so thankful mm -hmm. and uh, so appreciative and he said everything, it was just really like a dream. Mm. And for example, he said, this country, everybody obey the law. <laughs> when you go through a stop sign, <laughs> you stop. That's right. <laughs> Even you don't have any car coming, you stop anyway because that's a law. That's right. And he said, that's never possible anywhere else that, you know, yeah. and it's he a good was, point. yeah. And he was sort of like a, a major in, uh, in, in the army. And he came to this country. He said, well, I have a friend who runs a Chinese restaurant, and he needs help. I'm going to go help. Wow. So <laughs> my parents, um, they worked for this owner of the restaurant uh -huh. for nine years. Wow. Until in they, Seattle? Yeah, from 60 to 69. And wow. And the story was, he said, I enjoy working. And it's so peaceful, uh, this country. Uh -huh. Everybody law abiding and everybody was so nice. And I drive a car. He, he, he knows how to drive. And even the police officer stopped me. <laughs> and if I smile at the officer, and he didn't even give me a ticket. He <laughs> said, people really are kind. I said, what? I love it. <laughs> I think that's where to go. You just oh, yeah. keep smiling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I but, smiled when I got pulled over. Oh, I know. <laughs> She's like, I've had that. <laughs> I, I know. And he, so he smiled a lot. And Aww, he really enjoyed the work. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember every year end, and he and uh, my mom, they receive bonus from the restaurant. Ah, right. He said, I never receive any bonus. <laughs> I'm just doing my I job. Love this country. So yeah. those are the examples. Mm -hmm. and, and then I have to say that uh, he, he said, when I pass away, you know, I want to stay in this country. Mm. So, uh, and then uh, he passed away on Thanksgiving Day. And, and I oh think this was about uh, wow. gosh, 18 years ago. And he's, the last thing he said was Aww. like, I'm so thankful I made the right decision mm. that I ask you to go to America. Wow. So as an immigrant and even to this date, um, and I am very, very grateful. Mm -hmm. and, and I, uh, I do want to share that our times as an immigrant and I didn't feel that I have the fair or uh, same opportunity either. And, and I think I have learned, you know, as an immigrant, it's okay. And I think as long as I get the opportunity somehow. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I learned the process mm -hmm. and I learned to survive. And I can share with you about my, uh, the business adventure. That is quite an adventure. Please tell us. You're a <laughs> okay. social worker to um, a owner of, what was it, 35 McDonald's? Some sort 32, of a legend. Right. 32. Yeah. Right. And I, I didn't even intend to expand <laughs> to so many McDonald's franchise, you know, restaurants. Um, but it happened um, at the beginning in, in, the, in the early 80s when my husband 
got laid off as engineer. The economy in this country, mm -hmm. every so many years, sure. you, grew, you, you go through the cycle. So, and he said, well, at age um, close to 50, mm. I, I better do something different. And, uh, you know, I work so hard, and uh, if I become a chief engineer, then if I have to go through another cycle yeah. to, to work, and right. I don't think people are going to, you know, let me to become another chief engineer. Right. And I don't have that many years. Mm. So he was going to go to the franchise business of a gas station. Oh, okay. okay. And so he put in his application. But make a long story short, in the end, he discovered McDonald franchise is a very well-run Mm. you know, restaurant business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and he said, as an engineer, I can learn about their system. System. Okay. Ah, right, right, right. So, Portia, the story goes, I'm determined, okay? And I know my husband and I will be married over 50 years, but Congratulations. he's a very stubborn, <laughs> stubborn man. <laughs> and if he is determined to go into that business, and, uh, and then McDonald says, we don't want you because you don't have a business experience and you don't understand American culture. Oh and, my gosh. Uh, um, and I think we wouldn't even pick you as an applicant. But anyway, he was determined, and I, I don't want to get into it, yeah. but in the early 80s, and somehow he managed and he uh, got into the first restaurant located in Oakland <coughs> mm -hmm. and the worst neighborhood in, in uh, um, and uh, uh, on 68th Avenue in the foothill. And uh, I don't know. I said, well, I don't know what you're doing here. <laughs> and uh, McDonald Corporation said, well, I don't know what you're doing here. Actually, <laughs> I don't think you're going to succeed. Oh, okay, because, there's the challenge. <laughs> yeah, because in, you know, to, from the very beginning, mm -hmm. um, and he never received any support from the corporation. Wow. And so the uh, transaction of our first restaurant, somebody sold to oh, okay. CC, I think three times more of the fair price. Oh. So when you buy a business and you pay too much money, mm -hmm. and uh, McDonald to begin with is a penny profit, mm. okay? and. Uh, um, yeah, you're you're bound to losing mm -hmm. you know business very fast. Mm -hmm. So the whole, I think, time actually everybody expect him to fail. Mm -hmm. um, but he was determined. He, so my three children, uh, one was going to go to graduate school, law school, a private law school, and uh, uh, another one going to go to a private college. Mm -hmm. My youngest one is in high school. And we needed money, yeah, you see? Right. And I got to keep my job, right? right? And, he, and he said, I am determined I'm going to make this work. And this is a good system, and it's a good company, and, uh, on, and I'm learning already, and I want you to quit your job ah. uh, to join me. I said, no. I, I don't think I can do that. Right, and you have to because, study paycheck, <laughs> insurance. We, yeah, we, you know, I have medical insurance right. from the government, and right. I have benefits, and I have pension plan. Right. And, uh, Security. And the kids, yeah, the, we need, uh, you know, I mean, house and the food on the table, and I can't quit. And he was determined. He said, let's, let's talk. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, but knowing McDonald has, you know, is a good company and has, is a good product, so I did quit my job, and uh, um, it was really, really a very, very risky decision. But I think then lesson for me is sometimes in your lifetime, you need to make some, you need to take some risk. Right. And if you know this is a good opportunity, and uh, um, so we did that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then the business was going bad because the sale of the restaurant historically was very, very low. Mm. And it was poorly run mm -hmm. and uh, on, on top of a lot of security problems. And, uh, and literally people say, 
you know, this restaurant, they're not selling regular Coke. They're selling oh. the other kind of Coke. You know what oh. I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, I said, my oh, my God. Wow. Uh, so you, you, you know, your managers, your employees, they're ringleader in oh, this no. town. Oh, I my said, oh, my God. So my husband said, well, we got to make it work. And um, I tell you what, why don't I focus on the operation? Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and you are a social worker. You, 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 you do something about this situation, people right. issue. I said, well, I, I don't know what I can do. Um, but so wow. I, I, first of all, you know, I started talking to the employees and I tried to hire employees. I, I was determined to, well, if I hire 10 or 100 of them, I got to have one or two good ones. Yeah, right. And I started talking to the school, and uh, um, then the school teachers and the principal, uh, and they strangely, they are very eager to help me. That's and so they said, well, you want to help our young students? Mm. Um, very good deal, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, we're looking for, um, you know, business people to work to help us. I said, great, and I, you know, you can help me, or I can help you. Mm -hmm. So that's how it started, and I became a social worker again, oh. and uh, working with school, working with the church, um, and uh, working with the community, yeah. and uh, we um, started uh, like uh, oratorical contest for Martin, uh, Martin Luther King Day, wow. uh, and, and all the schools participate. Wow. Then we get all the McDonald's to contribute, to wow. work together, and uh, financially, and nice. also time-wise. And uh, we had, uh, every year on Martin Luther King Day, a big kind of contest. Aww. And the kids were really excited. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so slowly, um, we managed somehow oh. were not a bad person. <laughs> and, uh, and I eventually, my husband and I, we joined NAACP. Wow. And uh, we are the only colored people, not black. We are brown. But brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Lighter shade, yeah. <laughs> that's okay because their yeah. mission is for all the colored people. Of course. And uh, we were even honored oh. as uh, like, uh, you know, best contributor in the community, and that's okay. And we, we were wow. the only Asian in right. the NAACP convention. Wow. And, uh, and I was very, very excited, very, very Incredible. happy. And uh, so it took probably um, a year and a half, maybe nearly two years for the restaurant sale to go from the bottom mm -hmm. to all the very top uh, in, in that area. Wow. And uh, so, and I think the corporate sort of changed their perception uh -huh. about us as an immigrant. Right, And right. it's very, very, um, you know, naive or, you know, not qualified yeah. uh, McDonald's Former franchisee. engineer, social worker, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Porsche. And actually, we became outstanding kind of franchisee. Yes, I love also, it. Oh, well, we good. didn't even know what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Other than, I think it's typical, wow. a lot of immigrants, and I, I have to say, you know, people I, I meet, they all know the opportunity, they work hard. Mm -hmm. And in my heart, I know this is the golden opportunity, mm. the truly golden arch. I mean, we have a restaurant, mm -hmm. all right? And from McDonald's Golden Arch, you know, mm. where can you get something like that? And never mm -hmm. I could have dreamed right. to become a McDonald oh, owner. I love it. I and love uh, it. Uh, mm. in the backtrack a little bit, and uh, we did kind of, you know, do some investment in the real estate. Mm. Okay, in the 70s, 80s, California real estate, I guess we kind of hit the gold pot. Oh, <laughs> you I know? love it. And, but we had to sell them, and so we could get into McDonald's. Oh, yeah. got but, it. So that helped, the investment. Okay, uh, got it. But then afterwards, it took us a while to recover as soon as the sale goes up two or three times. Mm -hmm. And not only our name comes you know, up too, and, uh, and then our bottom line, I think, financially, 
we also made a little bit money. Yeah, probably just a little. So I know you don't, you're not going to believe me when I tell you that the show is winding down because it seemed like we just started our conversation and you have so much more I wanted to hear. So, but before we do, I, I'd like to know from the McDonald's empire, 32, to today, I know you've really stepped back from that. You and your husband started a wonderful nonprofit. I'm actually on the board of the East Bay chapter, which is a papa. Right. And we, we have your information on, on the video so people can find out more about how uh, a papa is encouraging Asian Americans to become more civically engaged. And in addition to that, I would love to hear real quick, um, maybe uh, share with our audience that uh, what you're doing with the event center in 2019. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I think from my a, you know, profession as a social worker and also business owner in McDonald, I have discovered Portia. I think, yeah. um, I think the relationship is very important. Mm. And uh, um, the reason we were able to expand McDonald restaurants and it's a long story, 34 years. And uh, it was uh, at the beginning was like um, always leftovers broken mm. restaurants and which was fine mm -hmm. and I think as immigrant and I think you know I think whatever opportunity we have even is leftover opportunity I feel is okay mm -hmm. um, because we are recent immigrants and so we fix the restaurant we fix the restaurant and a one and a two and again and again and until such time and then we were awarded decent restaurant and start making money the first day. So that was good. And a brand new restaurant, that was even better. So this is how we started. But in the process, we had a lot of relationship with people. Uh -huh. And I don't believe people can really make success in a vacuum or in isolation. We're, we're all in this together. And all together. And it basically, it's like, you help me and I help you. Is it? Is and it? I'm going to have to stop us right here. And I, I'm thinking we need to <laughs> okay. come back. Have you come back again and share the rest of your story? Because there's so much more we didn't touch on. And now Regina and I would love to hear from you. Her story is there's just so many more chapters we really need to hear. But in the meantime, we would love to hear from you. What, what's your story? What was one thing that touched you, that resonated with you? please leave a comment. Please check out youbelongherefoundation.org because we're all in this together, like Regina said, and we are all here because we all belong here. And I'm Portia Silverberg, Portia Chen Silverberg, and this production comes to you from Palo Alto, California. Thanks for joining us. Whether you got a family or single parent and or you're Asian, African, European or American Whether you pray to God or atheist is irrelevant Cause what you got inside is the same as so all your pleasure It'll change your heart It'll change your mind If that's what you Troubled in the homeless Can you say everywhere you are Is where your home is Sharing your heart in the dark Just like a lotus Letting your light shine bright So you can flow here Everlasting love of grace Like those did Jesus, Muhammad, Krishna, Buddha, and Moses Who carried the weight of